Okay, next up in chapter one is the division algorithm. And like I said at the start of this, number theory is mostly concerned with integers. Obviously, adding and subtracting integers only results in integers, but multiplying integers only results in integers as well. So we could therefore say that Z, remember that represents the integers, is closed under addition, subtraction, and multiplication, because you can only get integers from other integers with those operations. But this is not the case with division, however. Why? So I want you to just think to yourself, why is that not the case with division? Well, I guess you could think of an example like this if you say did 9 divided by 2, that gives you 4.5, and so it is no longer closed because 4.5 is not an integer. And so because of the fact that that is not an integer, it is not closed, when you do division with integers, you don't always get integers, therefore it is not closed. And this idea of things being closed will come up again in chapter 2 when you start looking at groups as well. So the division algorithm allows us to deal with division, but keeping it just in terms of integers, which means we can do a lot more of kind of like the number theory work on this kind of stuff. So let's go back to primary school. And I want you to imagine that you were, I don't know when you do this in primary school, probably like year four or year five, maybe even younger. And we were going to just work out what is 17 divided by three. Well, in primary school, if we were going to do 17 divided by three, what people usually say to themselves, so they go, oh, three, six, nine, 12, 15. Oh, but it's 15 and then two left over. So what people would usually say, not 15, but two left over. So it is five, but remainder two. It is five remainder two is how people usually would think about this being written. And then if we go a little bit further and we stop being in like um, in primary school and we now start thinking about improper fractions, maybe you do this in primary school as well, we would think about writing this as five and two thirds. Or we could think about this as saying that 17 divided by three is five plus two thirds so that it's not written as an, uh, a mixed number that we've got it as like an integer being added to a fraction that we've got here. And this concept is our way of trying to take things from just being um, like going away from integers just to kind of keep it in the realm of integers like this first line that we've got here. So we're going to be concerned with remainders a lot more and sometimes remainders we call the residue which means like the part that is left over. And so this is what we've got, right? If we were wanting to do A divided by B, we could say that it is equal to Q plus R over B. So it's kind of like this scenario that we've got here. A divided by B is equal to Q, which is called the quotient, plus the remainder divided by B. And that B part that we've got there is R obviously the divisor, it's the thing that we are dividing by. Now, I've written this in this kind of form, but this is going to be the common form that we will have a look at this. And all that's happened from this sort of division that we have here is I've multiplied this by B to get A, this by B to get BQ, and I've multiplied the R over B by B as well, just to get the remainder. Now, you don't need to know this kind of language, you don't need to know the dividend, but the dividend is the thing that we are dividing. So in this case, 17 is the dividend. And then the divisor is the thing we're dividing it by. The quotient is almost like the result that we have left over. So in this case, it would be five. And then the remainder is the two that we would have here. So what I would be able to do for our example up above is I could therefore say that 17 is equal to the divisor, which we said was three, multiplied by the quotient, which is five, plus the remainder, which is two. Or we could have written it as 17 equals five times three plus two, because we're not really that bothered about which order the divisor and the quotient come in. And it makes sense that the remainder should be between zero and the thing that you're dividing by. So if you're dividing by three, it makes sense that the remainder should only be zero, one, or two because you couldn't have a remainder of three. In that case, the quotient would have increased by one. And this is also an important part to note when we get to this third example, is that we always want the remainder to be positive. It doesn't make sense to have a remainder, something left over, that is a negative kind of part, right? So it makes sense that we want the remainder to be a positive value that we have here. And this process, this is the division algorithm, is where you take a number and you try and split it up into multiples of that quotient and you have some remainder that comes along with it. So here it says, use the division algorithm to find integers Q and R such that this is equal to this and this and this. So this is effectively, we're doing 94 divided by 13 and we're gonna find out what's the quotient and what's the remainder that goes with it. So for part A of the question, what I do on my calculator is I do, and you don't need to write this down, but you do 94 divided by 13, and 94 divided by 13 is 7.23, something like this. 
which tells me that therefore q is just going to be equal to 7. So 94 is equal to 13 multiplied by 7, and then all I need to do is find out what extra I need. So if I do 13 times 7, that's 91. 13 times 7 is 91, so that means I need 3 extra for my remainder. So in this case, q is 7 and the remainder is 3. Now for part B of the question, we're going to do the same kind of thing. So I'll do my 124, I'll divide it by 15 on my calculator. You don't need to show this part written down at all. And that is 8.26, which means in this case, Q is equal to 8. So 124 is going to be equal to 8 lots of 15. And I'll just find out what the remainder is by doing 8 times 15. That's 120. So there's a remainder of 4 in this case. So our Q is equal to 8 and our remainder is equal to 4. Now the last one we'll just be a bit careful about because we've got this minus 232. So I'll do my negative 232, I'll divide it by 11. Negative 232 divided by 11 is minus 21.09. Now we have a quote, uh, a quote, we have a choice here. We could say that Q is either minus, is either minus 21 or minus 22. Let's look at what happens with both of these things. So if I had minus 232 equals 11 multiplied by minus 21, let's see what the remainder would need to be. We get minus, uh, sorry, 11 times by minus 21, that's minus 231. This is minus 231. So to go to minus 232, we would have to subtract 1. So if Q was minus 21, the remainder is negative 1. This is not going to work because the fact that the remainder is negative does not work for the division algorithm. So instead, we will be using the fact that Q is not 21, but that Q is going to be negative 22. Sorry, not negative 21, but it's going to be negative 22. So it's going to be 11 multiplied by negative 22. 11 times by negative 22. That is minus 242. So we've got minus 242. I want it to be minus 232. So we add 10 onto it. So Q in this case is minus 22. Our remainder is going to be a positive number. And our remainder in this case is 10. So that's why we didn't want to use that line that we had there. OK, so that's all you're going to do for using this division algorithm to be able to write things out in this way. And the division algorithm does have some kind of other applications. So. This is going to be the user division algorithm to prove that for all integers n, n squared leaves the remainder of 0 or 1 when divided by 4. OK, so this means that if we have the number n, we know that if you're going to be using the division algorithm, it is going to be equal to usually b, q plus r. But because we're dividing by 4, this means that our b is going to be equal to 4. So actually, we could say that n is going to be equal to 4 q plus r. And because we've got remainders in this case, the only options that the remainders can be are 0, 1, 2, or 3. Why can't I have a remainder of 4? Well, if I had a remainder of 4, the value of q would have increased by 1, because you can't have a remainder of 4. You'd obviously have something left over at that point. So this means that n can be expressed in these different ways. We could say that n is just equal to 4q at this point, or we could say that n is equal to 4q plus 1, 4q plus 2, and 4q plus 3. So I'm just going to investigate what happens when I find n squared with all of them. So n squared would just be equal to 16q squared. And we're going to show that it leaves a remainder of 0 or 1 when divided by 4. So to show this has been divided by 4, I will write 4q squared plus 0. So I'm just going to say hence a remainder of zero. Now I'll do my next one, which will be our 4q plus 1. So n squared is going to be that expression all squared, which is 16q squared plus 8q plus 1. Now I'm going to show that when this is divided by 4, so I can do a 4 outside the front, there is still a remainder of 1. So I'm going to say hence a remainder of 1. So we're kind of doing proof by exhaustion. We're exhausting all of the different options that we can do. You can see where this is going to go, right? So I'll do the same thing here. I've got my 4q plus 2 squared. That is 16q squared plus 16q plus 4. So that's 4 lots of 
4q squared plus 4q plus 1. I don't have to do the plus 0, but there is now a remainder 0. Just to show that there's that nothing extra at the end, it can just be multiplied by 4. And notice how these are all in that same form of this, aren't they? They're still in that same form of 4q plus r, 4q plus r. It's just a different ver uh, version of q that we have. And so our last one is to do 4q plus 3. So when I square that, it's just going to be 16q squared. 4 times 3 times 2, that is going to be a 24q plus 9. So when I factor out a 4, I get 4q squared plus 6q plus 2, but that gives me 8. So there is a 1 here, so I'm going to say remainder 1. Now because it's a proof, we do need to have just a conclusion at the end, so I'm going to say hence... What does it say? For all integers n, n squared has a remainder of 1 or 0. Hence, for all integers n, n squared leaves a remainder, or I said that word residue, remainder of 0 or 1 when divided by 4. And I think there's a couple of questions like this in the exercise. So now we've done enough for you to go and have a look at everything from exercise 1a on the division algorithm that we've got this. OK, so, yeah, pretty straightforward at this point. Things do take a little bit more of a step up in the next video when we look at the Euclidean algorithm.